My name's Mike Nelson. My usual trade is freelance diving, anywhere and everywhere in the world. This time it had brought me into the Florida Everglades on a scientific survey for marine land of the Pacific. We were trying to answer a question. Can a saltwater fish live in fresh water? My job was underwater observation, and right now I was following a rumor about a monstrous fish seen in this lake. The lake was over 20 miles from the ocean. It was possible. I'd heard of a shark attacking a man 30 miles inland, in Australia. But I had my doubts about that. What I expected to see was an oversized catfish. swimming through the area where the monster fish was reported. At first, everything looked normal. Then I looked up and saw a shadow. This monster was no catfish. It was a shark and a big one. A lot of beautiful theories went up in smoke. And then it happened. Something hit me, like a sledgehammer. I was nearly out. I reached instinctively for the rescue pack attached to my belt. I was slowly losing my consciousness as the inflated rescue pack carried me above. I came to, I was lying in the deck of a boat. I heard voices, but I felt weak and paralyzed. I couldn't move a muscle. Then slowly, I sensed the circulation returning, and with help, I was able to move again. There he goes. Let's try him. Come on up. Come, he's a heavy one there. Ed, start the motor. We'll get him to the hospital. Oh, I'm not that bad. Well, you might as well have a checkup. We hooked your kicker on. We got your diving gear board. Oh. I can't imagine what hit me. It's like a sledgehammer. I thought I was a corner for sure. Uh, I know. Look at them. They look like they were dynamited. Ah, oh, shock. Same thing that hit you. I didn't hear anything. I know you didn't. That's why we're out here looking. What are you looking for? Well, we've got a poacher who's been operating in this area for a couple of weeks. Butchering fish like this. Now, if we hadn't been around, he'd have killed you, too. Well, you can say that again. You saved my life. I thank you. Hey, this character, uh, how's he do his dirty work, you know? Uh, monkey fishing. It's an electric shock. See, they used to dynamite him, but it made too much noise, so some smart boy figured out a way for this electric shock here. Put a strong charge of current right in the water, fish never know what hit him. This fish sure didn't. Probably never saw you. You being underwater in that rig of yours. Not that he would have cared. We got a lot of runaway convicts hiding out in these swamps. They can't work, so they pick up some money poaching. 
That's why you're out here, huh? You're looking for him. Right. Listen, uh, we've been talking away here. For all you know, we might be poachers ourselves. My name's Warren Tate. This here right over here is Ed Haskell, the State Fish and Game Commission. Well, it's more than a pleasure, let me tell you. Uh, my name's Mike Nelson. I'm uh, with the survey team here at uh, Silver Springs. But there's certain kinds of fish that don't live anywhere else but in these swamps. Then some poacher comes along and he blasts the fish for a few lousy dollars. Well, I'm with you. I don't like that guy either. I know how you feel. But he almost killed you. From now on, we'll have the sheriff's office looking for him full time. can hide out in a thousand places in these swamps. Well, he couldn't have gone too far after he shocked you. I have an idea. We've already passed right by him. How much back? The poacher? There's that reed patch back there. There's a spot up ahead where I can turn around. What do you say, Mike boy? How do you feel? Let's go get him. All right, Ed, quiet and careful now. never seen anything like this airboat. An airplane type propeller pushed it with tremendous speed. It had no keel, could glide over patches of reed, could turn in a dime, skid over logs. It flew over the swamp with a screaming roar. over a reed clump and mud bank, we were stymied. Can't get it started. That airboat slid right through. Yeah, I know. There's nothing to hang on. There's no keeling float on a heavy dew. Come on, get that thing started. Ed, well, hit it again. Hit it again. Come on. Now 
now all we could do was to cruise along slowly, hoping that accidentally we might sight him. Ducked into one of these side channels. Five yards of us and we couldn't see him in here. Is it all like this? You, uh, you know this part of the Everglades? Just so nobody knows the Everglades, except maybe the Seminoles. Lakes, marshes, cypress, swamps, 60 miles in every direction. Let us drift down easy. Try to spot him before he can get behind us and run. chance if he gets in those marshes. Yeah, I mean, it's too, uh, too shallow there, huh? About six inches, most of it. Of course, he can slide right over it, but we'd be no better off than if we're on dry land. So either we catch him right close to here, or we don't catch him. two weeks since I'd nearly been electrocuted underwater. I was engaged in a controlled experiment in the clear waters of Silver Springs. I erected an underwater fence. The idea was to plant deep sea fish in this underwater garden of fresh water where they could be constantly observed. Did you not, Doc? Yeah, I was getting a little bit worried about you. You stayed down there so long this time. I want to finish my job. Did you finish it? Most beautiful fence you ever saw. Good. My pets are getting a little bit stuffy in that tank. Let's get them in there, huh? Come here, I get this tank up. Did you lose any? Nothing. No. Yes. Mike Nelson? Yeah, that's right. I'm Jake Terriolo. I'm a guide in the Everglades. Warren Tate sent me. Warren Tate? What's the trouble? We got the poacher that almost killed you surrounded on a small island. We need your help to get him. Well, what you want me to do? I'll explain on the way. Bring your diving stuff, they said. Okay. Yeah. How'd you happen to find him? One of my people saw his airboat and told me. I guided Haskell to Tate in, but... He heard us coming. Is he alone? Yeah, he's alone. But he's got a rifle. Well, what is it they want me to do? Oh, it's a funny setup. You'll see. We traveled for hours through strange wild country. Jacob knew the swamps as if he had a map engraved in his head, and we took every shortcut. Never make it. 
How'd you get that? I got careless. And he's real good with that rifle. Keep down. Hey, Mike, glad you got here, boy. I hope you're in time. What's the situation? What do you want me to do? Go up and take a look for yourself. Now, be kind of careful. He's pretty tricky, on me. I took a look. Nobody could approach the shack without making a beautiful target of himself. I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, it's already afternoon. Now, if we wait around till dark, he's going to skedaddle out the back of that shack and clear out in the swamp. We never will get him then. We try to get around behind him. That's how I got this. If the fellow could get behind him, you could surprise him. There's only one way to do that, without being seen. There was only one way, underwater. If the poacher thought of it too, and if he decided to shoot an electric charge into the little lake, well, this time he might get me. I wasn't too happy with my job, but I did want to get a close look at the guy that almost killed me. Okay, boy? Yeah, just about Sure you won't need my gun? Yeah, I might get fouled up. Use my spear gun. Now, let's see now. How are we going to do this? All right. Check our watches, huh? Set yours to mine, huh? Take me about three or four minutes to get there. In five minutes, you guys start firing on them. That'll divert them, and I'll get in behind them. Five minutes from now. Good luck, boy. Call us if you need us. I felt a little lonely out there all by myself. The channel opened out into the lake, and the water was deep enough so that I couldn't be seen. I could only have known what was happening above. Four and a half minutes. This was close work. I had to figure time and distance exactly. I was depending on my compass. It wouldn't be funny if I came up not on the rear of the island, but in front, right under the poacher's gun. Halfway there. Three minutes to go. A minute and a half to go. I wonder how he's doing. I sure wouldn't like to be in his flippers. Gutty, fella. But Yankee. Yeah. Almost good enough to be an Indian. One minute. One minute left. And I ran into trouble. Alligators aren't supposed to attack anything large. They're scavengers. But I wasn't too happy at the idea of testing theory at this moment. Like most theories, they look a lot better in the laboratory. Half a minute. I was almost there. It was five o'clock and getting dark. When the sun disappeared, so would the poacher. Darkness was his only chance.
fist at the back of the shack. The poacher couldn't see me. I noticed a small ladder leading to the porch. I ducked back into the water to get rid of my gear. I needed complete freedom of movement to do this job. Some nice stomping. Now it's back to prison for you. Hey, let's get him in the boat there. Here with your hand. Uh, Jake, get in there. Get in the airboat and follow us. Well, Mike Boyer, anything we can ever do? Yeah, you already did. A couple of weeks ago, remember? Well, that was just about the end of Mike Nelson. And that's not all. You helped us with our scientific survey. Uh, how was that? Well, I tell you, uh, we've been looking for uh, peculiar kinds of life in the Everglades. Oh. <laughs> I thought you told him to follow us. Oh, look at that Indian fly. <laughs> I'm Lloyd Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today.